It was nearly 40 years ago we were invited to film and produce uh, the 30 minute travel film, The Old West Trail Country, Your Land and Mine. The film highlights travel destinations and activities of Montana, Wyoming, North and South Dakota, and Nebraska. And this film that you'll be seeing uh, was seen by an estimated 14 million television viewers and children throughout the nation. This Old West film was one of six travel films featuring Montana that we donated prints here at Montana Historical Society Film Archives. Film print stock lasts about 50 years before it fades badly. The Montana Archives has them restored with scene to scene color separation and digitizes the film to last forever and available to the public. So here it is, the Old West Trail Country, your land and mine. Jim and I were proud to have produced, directed, edited, and did much of the filming for this travelogue. You'll enjoy the picturesque scenery, original music score, and narration by Henry Fonda, a native son of Nebraska, one of the five Old West Trail states. He was a Academy Award winner in 1982 for On Golden Pond. So let's see the show. This land's America, the way it used to be. This land's America, America safe for you and me in the spirit of the land. Come and see your dream at hand, living free. This is the old west land of clear blue sky. Grassy plains with winding rivers, mountains reaching high. This is America, the way it used to be. Quiet streams with starry beams of sweet serenity. And it's your land and mine, the old west trail country. Old West Trail Country, your land and mine. It was here in this five state area that the preservation of our country's natural resources began in 1872 with the establishment of Yellowstone as the world's first national park. Yellowstone was first, and today there are six national parks, nine national monuments and memorials, and scores of scenic state parks. Millions of square miles of forest and prairie lands are administered by the U.S. Forest Service and the Bureau of Land Management. All this has been set aside for the benefit and enjoyment of you, the people. This is the old west, land of clear blue sky. Grassy plains with winding rivers, mountains reaching high. Legends of the West stalk the prairies, rolling hills, and forested mountains of Old West trail country. This was the land of the Northern Plains Indian. The Indians' hunting grounds changed forever when Meriwether Lewis and William Clark blazed the trail for an empire in 1804. The way west had been opened. Soon the trapper followed in quest of valuable furs. The beaver provided the impetus for the migration of adventurers to the Rocky Mountains. Beaver hats were high fashion in the East and Europe, 
The Missouri River and its tributaries were perfect water highways for trappers to reach the beaver-rich rivers. This region soon became the crossroads of our expanding nation as seven historic trails and several other routes crisscrossed the plains, prairies, and mountains. Conestoga wagons carved indelible evidence on the way west, like the ruts at Scott's Bluff National Monument, one of the many famous landmarks along the Oregon Trail, Bozeman Trail, and Mormon Trail. Pioneers by the thousands went west in search of new beginnings. Gold. What an impact that exciting word had on Western development as tens of thousands of sourdoughs flocked to the Old West Trail country in search of the mother load. The intrusion of the white man into Indian territory led to a bloody clash of two cultures. Evidence of the Indian Wars is most graphic at Custer Battlefield, a national monument in southeastern Montana. In June 1876, George Armstrong Custer and his entire command met defeat at the hands of the Sioux and Cheyenne Indians. Custer's last stand would become America's most romanticized controversial battle. Indian wars were a catalyst for the construction of military outposts. Fort Laramie, Fort Benton, Fort Lincoln, Fort Kearney, Fort Union, the very names conjure visions of cavalry riding in dusty columns of two with bugles blowing. Seemingly endless plains and prairies with their abundant supply of lush grass proved irresistible to the cattle barons of the Southwest. Great herds of longhorn cattle brought north to graze were the beginnings of today's cattle industry. The cowboy became the new symbol of the West. Homesteaders built their houses on these great prairies providing the roots for a rich agricultural economy to follow. The winning of the West was a story of bravery, hope, and perseverance. That legacy is brought to life at the many living history demonstrations at national and state parks and historic sites all across this five-state region. History echoes, too, in the vacant-eyed buildings and tumbled sidewalks of the Old West region's many ghost towns. Many were once bustling communities of thousands, until the mine played out or the drought hit. Wagon masters, stage drivers, and cattle drivers used natural landmarks, such as Devil's Tower in northeastern Wyoming, much as we use highway markers today. They were welcome sights to early travelers as they made their way across largely uncharted territory. It's like straddling a giant fire hydrant made of volcanic rock. Nothing between your boot tops, just clear mountain air. I can understand why this tower became our first national monument. From here on top, you can look out and feel the bigness of this place. And it's smack in the middle of the sprawling forest land. Shoshone, here in Wyoming, was our nation's first national forest. There's no better place to get a feel for what outdoor America is all about than by sharing a camping experience in Old West trail country. No hassle, no timetables, you set the pace. The Black Hills of South Dakota is just one of those places where you want to enjoy these public lands to the fullest.
This is a sight the visitor never sees, the top of Mount Rushmore. Standing up here on Tom Jefferson's head, it gives you a strange sensation. Awe-inspiring, I guess, is the word for it. Gutzen Borglum and his sculptors dynamited and hammered this mountain into a national shrine. It took 14 years to do it. Could last for thousands of years. And now millions of visitors marvel at the monumental heads of Washington, Jefferson, Roosevelt, and Lincoln. Borglum really drilled the soul of America into this granite outcropping in the Black Hills. The spirit of Teddy Roosevelt has been preserved with a national park named for him in the Badlands of Western North Dakota. The old rough rider came to the Badlands as a frail youth but he soon developed a physical and mental strength in its unfettered, uncompromising, rugged area. This public land is little changed from the days when Teddy herded cattle here. It's a country full of good times for visitors of all ages. My father told me that to really see this vast, rugged land, it has to be done on the back of a horse. I believe it. Every nook and cranny of this country can be reached on a good pony. And it's kind of nice to have a friend along. Real nice. The high country, this is a different world. You have to work hard to reach it, but the rewards, they're there. Wilderness, no candy wrappers, the solitude and the quick changing weather. Yeah, it's all here. There's a lonesomeness, but you learn to love it. Guess it's a feeling that there's a place pretty much untouched by the hand of man. Any visit to Old West Trail country is likely to be highlighted by the presence of wildlife in great variety and in great abundance. Wildlife need plenty of elbow room and out here they've got it. Nearly one third of the land in the five Old West states is public containing many state and national refuges and other wildlife preserves. It was the abundance of wildlife that made the area so attractive to its original inhabitants. The Indian tribes built their culture around the movements and habits of the American bison and other wildlife. My father chose this land. My son and I will not leave it. There is nothing better anywhere. We have it all right here. The Indian lives in modern America. But here we can still enjoy our heritage as well. It is a good feeling.
The heritage of the Plains Indian is preserved in the names of mountains, rivers, forests, cities, and towns. You see it in the many museums, reservation powwows, pageants, and celebrations. The culture and contributions of the Sioux, Cheyenne, Arapaho, Shoshone, Blackfoot, Mandan, and other tribes is everywhere. The scenery is constantly changing as the visitor travels through the five-state Old West Trail country. It is a land of geographic contrasts. In the north, the spectacular Rocky Mountains bisect Montana and Wyoming. Here, the rugged terrain is marked by alpine lakes, dense evergreen forests, open mountain meadows and glaciers left over from an earlier geological era. In western North Dakota and South Dakota, Mountains give way to rolling hills laced with streams that feed the ever-broadening mighty Missouri River on its journey east. Hills finally soften into prairies of waist-high grass in Nebraska. The weathered face of Old West Trail Country tells of centuries-long upheavals that created this land of never-ending change. Much of the area was once a large inland sea Fossils tell a fascinating story of prehistoric times. Special areas like Fossil Butte National Monument and Agate Fossil Beds National Monument have been preserved. Trained geologists under close supervision have excavated areas so visitors can catch a glimpse of the ancient past. Still another of the region's unique national treasures is a limestone cave in South Dakota's Black Hills. Wind Cave National Park is highlighted by numerous galleries, decorated with delicate lace-like crystal formations. Visitors soon discover that Wind Cave has a charm all its own. The International Peace Garden is along the North Dakota and Manitoba Canadian border. Peace and tranquility amid the natural beauty of the Turtle Mountains. As it was intended to be, the International Peace Garden is unquestionably a cultivator of peace. Each summer, it is host of the International Music Camp one of the outstanding fine art summer schools for musicians of both countries. What a setting for the arts. The West is proud of its roots. Wherever possible, it's being preserved for future generations. Like here at the Stewart Museum of the Prairie Pioneer, just one of the public museums that display our colorful past for the visitor. Stewart's ever-changing exhibits and permanent collections reflect the courage of the men and women who forged a nation. At Stewart, they even preserved the house I was born in at Grand Island, Nebraska. The story of the Old West is a unique mixture of fact and legend. Montana's Charlie Russell and other great artists like Frederick Remington and Alfred Jacob Miller left an invaluable documentation of frontier life and a chance for us to feel the lure and lore of the Old West. Probably no other man symbolizes both the struggle and success of the winning of the West than Buffalo Bill Cody, Buffalo Hunter, Pony Express rider, Indian fighter, Army scout, showman. Buffalo Bill dramatized the great Western adventure to an eager, wide-eyed public in the civilized cities of the East and Europe. His home is preserved here at a state historical park in North Platte, Nebraska. Less than 150 years ago, mountain men first traversed the Rocky Mountains. 
Today, astronauts have walked on the moon. Nowhere in the Old West Trail Country is the mind-stretching realization of the shortness of this time span more dramatic than at the Strategic Air Command Museum at Bellevue, Nebraska. On public view, aircraft, missiles, and other displays offer an exciting perspective to what has transpired so quickly in exploration. Getting to Old West Trail Country is part of the fun. Modern highways parallel and in many cases retrace historic migration routes. Jet service throughout the region lets you begin experiencing the West in a matter of hours from anywhere in North America. Old West Trail Country cities and towns offer a variety of relaxed, informal accommodations from budget to luxury. Or you can tie up for a stay at one of the sumptuous lodges, resort hotels, or mountain chalets located in the region's great national parks. Or you can get poster to the great outdoors at any one of many public or privately operated campgrounds scattered throughout the five-state region. Wherever you stay in these lands, held in trust for you, the variety of outdoor recreation is limited only by your imagination. Western rivers are tough. They throw you around a lot. Never let you relax either. There's no such thing as an easy ride. There's a new challenge around every bend of the river. These waters are open to all of us who feel the thrill of the sport. I may never leave this part of the West. Whether you test your angling skills against northern pike, channel catfish, or walleye in the great reservoirs, or match wits with a variety of trout in the cold mountain streams and high lakes, fishing and Old West Trail Country are synonymous. Madison, Gallatin, Yellowstone, Clark's Fork, Missouri, Snake, Platte, all these great rivers are open to fishing with public access for all. Dams have created vast and scenic reservoirs. Today, they are magnificent playgrounds for boating enthusiasts, such as the Bighorn Canyon shared by Montana and Wyoming. Another prime example is Jackson Lake in the rugged wilderness of Wyoming's Grand Teton National Park. Jackson is just one of several lakes scooped out by giant glaciers ages ago. What a spectacular setting for boating fun. The magnificent Tetons have been described as the most inspiring mountains in America. Who's to argue? Certainly, this national park rates as one of America's great scenic playgrounds, set aside for you to enjoy. The mood of the mountains changes with each season, even with each hour. Whether you're viewing them from the ground or the air, they are the mountain aristocrats of America.
we have seen and heard so much about the american west we had to experience it you have mountains that scrape the sky it overwhelms the visitor the space so much of it lakes rivers forests it has a beauty that belongs to all the world and the people they make you feel so welcome glacier national park in montana we will long remember its scenery and solitude what do they call it the big sky country yes Part of the pleasure of seeing Glacier Park is the charm of the vintage touring buses. Bright red and open topped, they transport you handsomely over the magnificent Going to the Sun Highway. Every season has its particular highlights in Old West Trail Country. Autumn is mellow time, particularly in our national parks and monuments. Like Yellowstone in the northwest corner of Wyoming. The crowds are gone. The wildlife is more abundant and easily approached. The thermal theatrics seem more spectacular in the crisp autumn air. And opportunities for sightseers are countless. Yellowstone is truly a world apart. It is enjoyed by visitors from the four corners of the earth. began right here. The idea of preserving scenic, geologic, historic, and other significant areas for the benefit and enjoyment of all the people, not just a few. The mountains, prairies, and forests of Montana, Nebraska, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Wyoming are public lands for all of us. The Old West Trail country is your country. Yes, is your land and mine. This is the old west, a land for you and me. Five states to travel down the road of history. Come see America the way it used to be. Travel through the wonders of a land that's big and free. Yeah!